Okay, here is a uh, little bit of a documentation of my uh, 486 build. I recently decided to basically reproduce the 486 class uh, PC I had back in 1994-95 and um, this is the, uh, the 486 case that I found on eBay to use. It came with a floppy 200 watt power supply and um, Let's see the cover. The uh, it's pretty clean. The uh, front bezel and uh, cover here. Uh, you can see it's a desktop unit, not really a tower. And um, anyway, I had a number of components um, left over from the machine that I'm trying to rebuild. Actually, um, not that part, but here we have the uh, here we have the. Uh, DPT SCSI card. It's a uh, PM2021 uh, ISA SCSI card that I'm going to use for the drives here. And my uh, Gravis Ultrasound, Ultrasound Classic actually, with uh, one mag on it. And um, that'll be for audio. And uh, I picked up a VLB uh, video card with the uh, Sang ET4000. Uh, W32P chipset. Uh, this is a Cardex card, but it's a uh, it's functionally identical to the Hercules Dynamite Power that I had in my original machine uh, back in back in the day. So the uh, 46 uh, the, the case here came with a 46 motherboard. Uh, you can see here that had a uh, 4666 in it. I'm not even sure who makes the motherboard, um, but I pulled it out. And um, I'm planning to use the uh, this ASUS uh, PVI 486SP3 uh, to replace it um, with a that has a Intel Overdrive 4666 in it now. I intend to uh, put a 5x86, an AMD 5x86 uh, 133 that I have right here. Um, in the board uh, and run it at uh, overclocked at 160 megahertz, which will give a 40 megahertz bus for the local bus to drive the uh, the video card, which is pretty good speed. Anyway, um, so got the manual for the board, and now I'm about to open up the power supply to take a look and see uh, condition of the uh, the caps and how grimy it might be inside. So, looks like the power supply is going to be okay for now, and uh, so I went ahead and mounted the. Uh, uh, Asus board. It uh, had to shift around a few of the uh, the uh, standoff pegs and the uh, sockets for the uh, for the two screws that hold it in. Uh, but it's in place. Power is hooked up, and uh, I'm going to mount the video card and uh, the SCSI card. Get a hard drive in there, and then I uh, just verified that it functions with this overdrive. Uh, 46 in there, and then uh, go after the uh, the big array of uh, dip switches that control the uh, the CPU type. And uh, I looked looked up and found what the uh, what the configuration for the 5x86 is, and we'll try that after uh, we verify that the board itself uh, just works generally. So got the video card mounted, and uh, actually hooked up a display. I've got the floppy. Drive is not connected, there's no keyboard, there's no mouse, nothing's connected except uh, there is memory, this is a video card. It's got power and here's a screen. I just want to see if I get any kind of a post. Here we go. So I powered it on, it didn't post, a uh, couple of things were, were at issue I think. There were a few uh, jumpers on the motherboard that weren't quite right. Um, I noticed that SIM slot 2 was full but not 1, you can't run like that. Um, so I put the new uh, two 16 meg SIMs in there. And uh, the video card, uh, was it actually has 1 meg on it. Uh, there are sockets for a second meg, and the dip, uh, the uh, 
dip jumper uh, was set for two megs, I guess what happened was the seller harvested the memory out of there. Didn't change the uh, didn't change the jumper setting, and uh, so that was keeping everything from booting. So, so here we go. And all that's hooked up is memory, the video card, and uh, and the CPU. That's it. No keyboard or drive or anything. But it recognizes the memory, recognizes the CPU that's in there now at the proper clock. And it's a good starting point. So now uh, I will add the SCSI card, a drive, and get DOS loaded. And I even have an AT uh, style keyboard with that old connector downstairs. The same keyboard I used on the box that I'm uh, actually basing this rebuild uh, upon. So, uh, old keyboard. Alright, we'll take a look uh, at the next step. Okay, just did a swap of the 2032. BIOS battery. Oh, hold on, that's not good. Well, as uh, you saw on the last video, last night, I managed to snap the uh, upper arm off the battery compartment. Uh, so I'm about to solder a, uh, a wire on and, and uh, mount it that way. So that should get things back into business. Okay. Not the uh, most elegant fix. I uh, soldered a, a small length of cable uh, from the broken contact uh, to a, uh, a wire that I spread out and taped down with electric tape. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. I think it's a little loose potentially in the socket. I might have to put a clamp on it. Uh, I didn't want to solder directly to the coin. Um, anyway, I got a dug out the AT keyboard, got it hooked in and uh, configure the BIOS and so uh, I got a good boot now I think I'm going before I put any uh, cards or anything in there I'm going to upgrade the cache memory uh, it's 128k cache right now level 2 which gives it uh, the cacheable memory maximum from, if in right back mode is uh, 16 megs um, and I want to double it I've got chips to double it to 256 which makes the maximum cacheable memory uh, 32 megs, and that's what I've got in there, is 32 megs. And um, so that will use all nine instead of just five of the uh, L2 and tag cache uh, sockets. So, and I think this is the memory right here in this nice tube. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Pulling out the cache memory. Got one chip out, and there is the other uh, original cache memory uh, that was that made up 128k. So, gotta roll the chips just a little bit. Okay, I've got all the uh, the cache, the 256k cache installed. Eight cache chips and the one tag chip at the end. They're all the same actually uh, with these chips I found. Anyway, I changed the jumpers to 256 from 128 for this particular configuration. Let's start it up and see uh, what we get. Mm. That didn't necessarily sound good. There was a problem starting up after I added the, uh, the new cache and you heard the beep and uh, I pulled some of the chips, uh, rearranged some uh, jumper settings and it finally turned out that when I shifted the keyboard behind the computer to do the install, the ISA part of this uh, VESA local bus board lifted out of the slot. So that was the problem. The cache was probably fine. Uh, from the first install point. Anyway, um, I just started up, got a post, and you can see it has 256k cache now, which means it can cache, um, uh, the L2 cache can cover the whole 32 megs of RAM uh, in the system. So, um, so that's all set. Got an old Seagate Hawk 2 gig uh, SCSI drive. 
that I'm about to install and uh, that will hook to the SCSI controller, a full length card over there uh, that I'll throw in the system. The floppy cable that came with the uh, case is too short to reach the motherboard uh, floppy connector. So I'm reaching into my little box of cables. This is actually one of two equally filled boxes of this same size that have all the cables I've accumulated over the past 30 years really. So uh, hopefully I've got some SCSI cables and some floppy cables and uh, we'll have to have to get that going. Digging for floppy cables found a floppy cable and the floppy drive uh, boots up, or at least the motor spins and the light comes on. Gonna give it the standard uh, cleaning, a few drops of alcohol and a cleaning floppy. It's always what I do for the first um, for the first spin of a drive before I uh, actually put a real disc in there. So I'll do a few reboots with this in there. And we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can boot DOS. There we go. Okay, I got the uh, SCSI card installed and the uh, SCSI drive hooked up. It looks like there is a little issue there. I'm going to look up what that code means. Um, but uh, it could be a termination power setting as um, I'm really not sure. There's some strange, uh, some somewhat ambiguous terms on the uh, jumper sheet for the Seagate drive, so I'll look that up. Okay, so I have the uh, I have one SCSI hard drive, a Mac store, that I dug out, hooked up, unterminated, and I have a uh, Toshiba CD-ROM terminated. Uh, looks like I'm all set. The problem was uh, in BIOS, I did not have uh, the ISA bus uh, having DMA5 enabled. The DMA5 is the default on the SCSI card. And so once I did that, it was able to pick up the two devices and DOS 6.22 now recognizes that there is a drive. Okay, so I guess a whole lot has happened on the build here since I last did a video. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting a SCSI drive to work with the, uh, with the DPT card. Um, I had the, uh, let's see, I tried one, two, three, four, there's a fifth one somewhere. Anyway, and someone mentioned in the, um, the comment thread on my Byte Seller post uh, about the build that, um, you know, why not use an Adaptech that everything supports? And uh, so I got an Adaptech, what is it, a 1542? Anyway, um, that actually has Windows 95 native drivers. The DPT card does not. So I'll actually get higher performance out of Windows 95 when I use it. Uh, so I found a new inbox, went for like 20 bucks on eBay, ordered it, installed it. I've got it hooked to the hard drive, uh, the first one I tried actually, uh, way back when, and to the uh, CD-ROM. And it's working. I actually got the uh, everything set up, um, got DOS installed, but these three DOS installed disks, 6.22 actually worked from uh, the original disc when I, from 1994 when I first used them and um, you can see here it booted um, booted into uh, into DOS so kind of a base point here and I can actually get get started with some stuff. Um, I can't recall if I reported that the cache memory I doubled to 256k um, you can see that here I may have actually covered that in an earlier segment um, and I installed the uh, Gravis Ultrasound, the red card, 
which will be audio. I think the next thing I'll do is install its software drivers and um, then from there uh, get Windows 95 uh, OSR 2.5 installed so that I can use the Ethernet card, which is also a new inbox, to, um, to start moving files from the internet to the hard drive. Uh, demo scene productions games that kind of thing so then I'll be set and um, and so there it is that's that's this latest update more to come so in order to get the proper Adeptech uh, CD-ROM driver I need to get it off the net and write it out to a 3.5 inch disc and the only machine I have right now that can do that is a Next station, the uh, slab. It's kind of dark in here, so uh, here we go. A little better. Anyway, so I'm booting this up. Um, it has a 2.88 uh, megabyte uh, floppy drive, and it should be able to reach 720k MS DOS disks. I think I'm going to need to reconfigure the uh, LAN settings because I changed my router a while back, so. And at the suggestion of somebody on the Vogans forum, I changed the uh, port address for the uh, SCSI card. It was conflicting with the sound card. The Gravis ultrasound was at 338H, and so I moved the SCSI card to 234H. And uh, the CD-ROM is functional. Drivers installed. Copying files from the Win95 OSR25 CD to the hard drive to install Win95C. It has been definitely a long time since I used a serial mouse. And there it is, downloading the first file through Ethernet and IE4 on the machine, it's the Gravis Ultrasound uh, disk, uh, install disk package, and um, download complete. I got caught up in the dance between Windows 95 and F8 and boot a previous operating system which apparently can only happen once and then you are locked into command line Windows 95 DOS 7 so I'm giving up starting over splitting the one gig drive into two 511 meg partitions and I'm about to install system commander to split between uh, DOS 62 and Windows 95 just to keep things uh, nice and separate. So right now we're reformatting uh, C and there's the drive and there's the drive light and there's the controller. <coughs> so we're on our way. <coughs> there we go. Gus drivers installed. Playing Crystal Dreams 2 the demo. Ok, 
Okay, I'm about to put the uh, heat sink, 486 heat sink on the 5X86. The trick is a thin, thin layer, as thin as you can get it. So let's see how I can spread this out. So last night I upgraded the CPU to a 5X86 and got the uh, motherboard set up to run it at 160, overclocked for 133. There you go. And so that's a nice little bit faster than the 4666. And uh, I have to apply heat sink and, heat sink and fan uh, since I'm overclocking it. And um, there it is. So uh, I'm almost there with this setup. And yesterday, uh, while I was doing this, uh, they published a story. Um, it's, yesterday was Mac's 30th birthday, and I had a brief interview, and the uh, room in which this computer will end up, the downstairs computer room tied to my bike seller blog, was uh, featured with a gallery, and, and it's a pretty nice piece. Anyway, so uh, lots of good stuff yesterday. And uh, there we have it further along. Installing System Commander 7, an older boot manager to switch between DOS and the Windows 95 partition. Uh, this took some digging to find. So I just updated the, upgraded the uh, video RAM on this uh, thing. Uh, ET 4000W32P video card from 1 meg to 2 meg. You can see the size of the chips there. It was a bit of a challenge to find the chips, but um, anyway, they match up, so. basically why I set up this DOS system to uh, play around with mods on the GUS right there in red and um, and there it is so I think it's time to uh, box up the machine and take it downstairs to where it's going to stay installing Doom 2 from CD 
think I'm gonna package this up tonight and take it downstairs. We'll see. Tightening the CD-ROM drive in just before I put the case on, and we're almost set. The hard drive is down there on a uh, on a few uh, rubber uh, cushion pads. I think it'll be fine, and uh, almost ready for the case. All together, here we go. And it's booting into System Commander, which lets you choose between different OS's on the same or different drives. So the system is all set up downstairs in the uh, computer room. We've got the uh, joystick working, case back together, the LAN hooked up, uh, the original uh, keyboard I had on the computer from 1994 that I've been trying to uh, reproduce with this build. Uh, it actually has uh, Alps uh, Gray, I think, uh, key switches. Um, pretty nice clicky keyboard and the same mouse uh, that I used back in uh, 94. I actually found it. Um, I purchased a copy of it, but I found uh, the original uh, as soon as it arrived, of course. But anyway, I wanted to install uh, Quake off the CD, which is several decades old. So, here we go. And there it is. Put it in the games folder. This. And off we go. This is a uh, I'm sure 486s haven't typically seen a CD-ROM with this speed. This is a uh, 32 times SCSI CD-ROM drive, and um, I think on the original machine uh, to this spec that I had back in '94, I added a uh, dual-speed external CD-ROM. Uh, it was actually caddy-based, so that was um, about 16 times slower than this one. Um, not that the uh, the ISA bus that the SCSI controller is plugged in can even take advantage of the uh, transfer rate of that drive. So, anyway. Oh, and we have the joystick hooked up. I can't recall if I mentioned that or not. This is the same stick I had back in 94, plugged into the back of the Gus with that weird 15 pin connector. And uh, still installing. I really need to come up with some kind of a label change. 486DX266, some kind of an AMD 5X86 little sticker or something. Shame there's no uh, clock speed LEDs. Couldn't find a decent looking case uh, after a couple of weeks of looking that had uh, three digit clock speed LCDs that actually functioned and didn't look ridiculous. Here's a little bit of Quake. You can see it's actually a little choppy at 320 by 240. The, um, 
I think Quake was really meant for a little more, uh, a little beefier CPU than the 5x86. I did play it uh, all the way through on a DX4 120, actually. Which was um, slower than this. So. Playable, but uh, maybe not the maybe not the most magical uh, experience. Three D engine technology marches on. Looks like my work is done here.